Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code Cities. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about another very popular string problem, longest common prefix. So in this, we have to find the longest common prefix among an array of strings. If there is no common prefix, we simply have to return an empty string. So as we have the example given here, this is an array of strings where we have three different strings and the output is fl because the common prefix among this these three words is fl so that's that's the common and that is the longest common okay so we are on the whiteboard to discuss the approach for the common so let's say i'll take a few words like flower flow floral Yeah, so let's say these are the strings that we have. We have to find the longest common prefix. What's the common prefix among these? F, L. That seems to be the longest. First, we have to understand uh, why longest common prefix. Prefix for this is even F. Because F is also common. But after F, we also have a L that is long. So that's the longest. F L O also could be the prefix, but because the last word has a U in it, so F L O could not be. So F L is the longest common prefix. So that's this is going to be our desired output. So let's understand what could be the approach for solving this. Uh, let's understand the brute force uh, approach first. So Brute force, like we know, it's the worst case scenario. So, okay, common prefix means if the initial letters of the series of words are same. So, if that's the thing, then we can do a character-wise comparison while traversing that, as in. We take the first character, which is at the zeroth index. So, if i equal to zero, we take if all the characters at the zero index are same. If yes, then we move ahead and we go to index one, and then we check if all the characters are uh, at this particular index, the second index, the same. So that's also true. Then we go to the third. So in this, we see O is there, O is there, and O is there, but here U is not much. So in this case, what happens? We break. Okay, so whatever is stored in the initial prefix becomes our output. So that's the brute force way of doing. So what's the long side of this? First of all, we have an array of strings. So this that you're seeing, this is already an array. Array of n strings. And then we are saying, Within each string, that is within each word, we have to traverse through each character of that word. So we already have n strings, and then we'll also have uh, each string of some length, let's say x length. Okay, so so one for loop, the outer for loop will be for traversing through every word, and then the inner for loop has to go in through every um, uh, going through every character of each word. So that that results in a time complexity, is exponential. N square. So that doesn't seem right. There could be a better way of solving this so that it can be achieved um, in the order of n times complexity. So, what would be the better approach for doing this, the optimal approach of doing this? What we'll do is we'll take the first word as prefix. Whatever is the first word of the array, we'll take that as a prefix and then compare the second word with the prefix, whatever the prefix variable is, in this case, second and first word. What we have to do in this comparison is to check, check if the index of 
the prefix in in the second word is zero. So index of is a function, a method of string, which is what it does is it returns the first occurrence of the substring. So if this is the substring like prefix, if the second word is containing the prefix, what is the first occurrence of that? For an example, if I give an example of like, like we have flow and flower. So if I say flower, in, inside flower, what is the index of a flow? Means flower dot index of flow. If I have to run this, I would be getting zero. Why? Because flow already exists. This is the initial occurrence of the word flow or the substring flow inside the string flower. So whatever the substring is, the first occurrence of that substring is written. The first occurrence is zero. If 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 the letters were here, if the substring was like if the substring was let's say low, then the first occurrence would be one. And another property is if it does not exist, it will return minus one. Okay, so that's the that's the property that we're going to discuss. This thing what we have mentioned, this has to be done inside a while loop. Why you know why inside a while loop? Because we have this first word and we have the second word. For the in the beginning, if these two words itself do not have do not have anything in common, then what is the point in going for the third word onwards? So that is why we are putting this in a loop. If these two only does not have anything in common, we will have to break the loop. Okay, so it, it will go and keep on checking to do that. Now. Once it does this, so we'll have a certain prefix. Then with that prefix, with that prefix, we'll compare the third word. Then we'll have, we'll we'll further define the uh, we'll further define the prefix, and then with that prefix, we'll compare the fourth word. So we'll keep on doing this till we till we reach the longest common prefix. Because as I already mentioned previously, even f was a was a common prefix among the words, but we wanted to have the longest common. Okay, so that's the approach, and ultimately we have to return whatever is going to be contained in the prefix string. So that's the approach. So we'll, we'll do a dry run on this. We'll copy the strings that we have. So I have the prefix, the first word is flower. Then I'll go to the second word flow. In this I'll say flow dot index of flower. Is flower contained in flow? What will it say? No, not equal to zero. Okay, but I have to keep on checking till I reach the end. So what what I have to do? Now, if that is not equal to zero, what I uh, okay, I forgot to write that. If it is not equal to zero, what we have to do? That was the main uh, main part. So I wrote that. So if it is zero or not, if not, if not zero, then do no character. From end of prefix. Okay, which means if it is not equal to zero, I'll my new prefix will now be F L O W E. Then I'll do the same thing. Flow dot index of F L O E. Again not equal to zero. Then my new 
substring uh, many of people with them flow. So then if I do this flow dot index of now it will be equal to zero. When the loop is going to break, when the loop is going to break, it is going to go to the next row. Okay. So now if my prefix is flow, it says flow and my word is floral. So floral dot index is again going to be not equal to zero. So now flow will become FLO. Floral dot FLO will be given zero. So now my prefix becomes FLO. And my word, next word after floral is flow. So then flow dot flow flow dot index of flow FLO of flow is not equal to zero. So now I'm going to chop off the last character and then I'm going to get FN. So FN, if I do a flu dot index of FN, I'm going to get zero. So once I get this, I've reached the end of my array and this is going to be my prefix. Output. So that's about the um, diagram for this array. So now let's move on to the coding. Okay, so now we are going to start with the coding. So this is the main method. I will define the array of words, um, the array of strings rather. So I'll take these three strings as the input. And into the method. Okay, so what's the first thing we have to do is uh, we'll take the first word as our prefix. So our prefix is going to be SPRS like this. And then we will start with the for loop. So int i equal to zero, i less than n, and i less than s. Okay, so this should be a string. Okay. So in this, uh, as I told, we have to use the index of method and then we are going to check if the index of, of the, uh, the word, wherever we are at, um, that should not, uh, if that is not equal to zero, then we are going to remove the letter from the end. One more thing to note, notice the i should not be zero. It uh, should be one because the first word is already set to the prefix. So we should start from the second word. And another thing is, uh, we have to use a while loop inside this, as I have mentioned in the whiteboard also. So in this, we'll see uh, strs of i dot index of prefix. If this, or rather while this is not equal to zero, then we have to do the manipulation of the prefix in which we will do prefix equal to prefix dot substring uh, substring method has two uh, parameters begin and end index begin index is inclusive and end index is exclusive so since we are trying to remove the last character from the string so we'll use prefix dot length in this one so in this way we have manipulated the prefix to remove the character from the end every time uh, this condition is turning out to be true it is going to remove that so it, it is going on uh, on and on inside uh, the loop. So it is going to break whenever it becomes zero, means we have found our prefix, so it comes out of the loop. Uh, another thing is, uh, if we take a look at this uh, uh, this uh, specification that if there is no common prefix, return an empty string. Okay, so what, what might happen uh, is uh, in, in case of no common prefix, so, it can turn out that when we are trying to compare our given prefix and the word uh, and the string where we are at, uh, the string where we are at can be denoted by this strs of i. So at any given point in time, if that word and the prefix do not have anything in common, then what, what might happen is we will keep on removing characters from the end of the prefix and we'll come to a prefix which would be basically um, uh, having nothing. So let's say if these are the two strings, fog and dog, they do not have any prefix that is common, right? So if fog is our prefix, let's say, so when we're comparing, we'll remove G from the end, then we'll remove O, and then we'll remove F. So 
So in this way, we'll be left with nothing but an empty string. So that check also we'll have to do over here. That if prefix already equals uh, this empty string, then we have to return. Why we have to return? Because if there is nothing common at any given point in time between the prefix and the word, there is no point in traversing to the rest of the array. So we'll just return minus one. Otherwise, otherwise we have to return the prefix itself. So out of the for loop here, we have to return the prefix itself. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that is pretty much about the logic. So let's try running this. So I'll try to run this now. Yeah, so we got FL as the output. So I'm going to change the input uh, now such that we do not have any common prefix. Just put race car and yeah. I'll just try running this. Uh, one more thing was, yeah, I should have made it as an empty string because it says return an empty string of minus one. So, yeah, we got an empty string. And uh, let's say I keep this. And then So we got the desired output. Yeah, I think uh, that's it for this question. Thank you so much for watching the video.